Universidad Alberto Hurtado, and also a PhD candidate at Universidad Academia de Humanismo Cristiano. Thank you very much for attending my presentation today, where I'm going to share the results of the initial part of my doctoral research project, the relevance of EFL learning, teacher beliefs, and impact on teaching. As we all know, EFL is the primary foreign language offered in Chilean national school curriculum. This status reflects the perceived value of English for global communication to a broader cultural, cultural literacy and a means to foster students' cognitive and social skills development. The Chilean Ministry of Education arguably provides significant support. However, results in the Chilean national test demonstrate persistently unsatisfactory results. For instance, the 2017 National English Examination demonstrated that seven out of 10 11th grade students were not able to achieve an A2 level of communication competence. The question of why these results are so low, an indication of students' inability to develop communication skills in their school career is my main motivation to carry out this research. Undoubtedly, success, successful learning is affected by a complex interrelated set of factors, which I briefly present in the following figures. A micro context where we see EFL as valuable for the country in which we find a national curriculum, bases curriculares, study programs, a clear study plan with over 700 hours of instruction, quality textbooks for free of free access for students and teachers, and a body of qualified specialized teachers for the vast majority of schools in the system. All that supported by different types of regulations which facilitate the EFL teaching and learning process. At the micro level, the school community, we can also see appraisal of the learning of EFL with agents such as school authorities, guardians, and others, who are also generally interested and supportive. Inside the classroom, we finally see students who bring their beliefs, interests, needs, and motivation to face the challenge of learning the language, together with an EFL teacher who provides their professional competences, knowledge, and skills to teach the language. Teachers also bring their own beliefs that guide their pedagogical decisions. This is the starting point this research focuses on to begin the intriguing question I presented earlier. Developing an inquiry about teacher beliefs is not, however, an easy task, since, is, since as it is already known, they tend to be quite malleable and, in, and many times of a contrasting nature. They are considered to be personal and social cultural, implicit and explicit, practical and theoretical, dynamic and resistant, complex as well as systematic. Given the interest I presented, my research question for this project is, what is the relationship between teaching practices in English teacher representations about the relevance of learning English in vulnerable schools in Chile? The theoretical lens I pick to see into this complex problem is the social representation theory, as it provides a rather balanced approach to explore teachers' beliefs from an individual cognitive perspective as well as allowing a close inspection of the social aspects involved. Moscovici's theory of social representations is concerned with the process through which knowledge, including beliefs, images, ideas, etc., is produced, transformed, and transmitted into the social world. In this sense, then, a social representation is understood as a system of values ideas and practices with two functions, to guide individuals to move in their world 
and to provide the means for communication, a code for social exchange, and a code for naming and classifying all aspects of their world and their individual and group history. Social representations are created within society by the members of that society. From the structural school of this theory, a social representation is understood as a network of beliefs which are connected to one another around a core belief or central kernel, a prototype that represents a class. Although beliefs take different shapes with different values, there's always a core belief which connects them all to one another. The stable element in the central kernel dominates the meaning of the peripheral elements. The core beliefs have a stronger resistance to change than the ones that appear in the peripheral schemes. And also core, core beliefs express the permanence and uniformity of the social representation, while the peripheral schemes express variability and diversity. Taking that the theory I presented as the framework for this study, my methodological decisions are oriented towards an interpretive phenomenological approach expressed in a mixed method research in the understanding that humans extract meaning from the world through personal experience, where the processes of consciousness, consciousness could provide deeper insight into the rich meaning of everyday phenomena. In this sense, the data generation instrument for this research are first a questionnaire, followed by the analysis of teaching materials, a semi-structured interview with the reduced purposive sample, and the final triangulation of data to check consistency of findings obtained through the different instruments used. This report includes the first results of my project considering the findings of the first instrument, an online questionnaire that captures the structure of free lists. A free list is a mental inventory of items that an individual thinks of within a given category. Participants are given a heading, which they have to complete with as many concepts or items they consider relevant and the order, the order of their preference. Free lists provide insights into how people perceive and categorize the world, the rules for behavior and what has meaning for them, and how they imagine and explain things. Analysis of a set of lists from a human population allows then inferences about the cultural salience of the items in that social representation. Therefore, the salience index is a combination of the average position and frequency of citation of each item in determining the relative importance of items. The questionnaire I designed includes five open-ended questions each of them aiming at gathering insights into the studied social representation from three, sorry, from five different perspectives, teacher identity, discipline, teaching context, teachers, students' perceptions, and teaching content. As far as the participants, this questionnaire was answered by 80 ESL school teachers from 14 out of the 16 regions of our country. They work in different kinds of schools, private, private subsidized, municipal, Nueva Educación Pública, as well as urban and rural schools. They teach in all levels of schooling. They hold different degrees, English teachers, primary school teachers with a specialization in English teaching and others. They all, they've also been involved in a range of in-service education experiences and have a wide range of teaching experience from novice teachers to teachers who are about to retire. Let us look at the results. First, Let's examine how the social representation learning English looks like 
from an identity perspective, when they completed the statement, para mí, ser profesor de inglés es, In that black box, in the black boxes, you will see those items with a high salience index representing the central kernel area of the social representation. Looking at the index for the population in the third column, we see that from the point of view of the identity of these ESL teachers, the main item is placer, followed by a contrastive item, difícil. In the gray boxes below are the items that are located further away from the central kernel, even if they show a relatively significant salience, salience index, vocación, gratificante, and global. Looking at the central kernel subgroups of the sample that show a different pattern from the salience, from the general salience in the index, structure, we can observe that for rural school teachers, English is strongly associated with placer, but difícil does not appear as part of the central kernel for their social representation. A similar pattern is observed for private school teachers, teachers of young learners, as well as teachers with an extensive teaching experience and teachers who have no in-service education. For teachers who teach in middle school and for novice teachers, the central kernel of this social representation presents a reverse pattern, being difícil, stronger than placer. In the case of teachers in technical schools, the item placer lacks a significant salience index. When the social representation of learning English is seen from a disciplinary perspective, el inglés es, we can observe that no item presents a significantly strong item that could be included in the central kernel area of the social representation. Items like útil, acceso, and global fall in the closer area to the, cl to the central representation while culturas, fácil, comunicación are located further away, being still relatively significant. It is interesting to notice that for populations such as female teachers, teachers who work in municipal schools, teachers who teach in middle school, high school, as well as teachers with no in-service education, and teachers who have more extensive in-service teacher education, no items can be found that fall inside the general um, social representation. It is also noticeable here that for technical school teachers, comunicación appears as the, strong, the strongest item in their subgroup social representation. While for private school teachers, culturas is a strong item within their subgroup central kernel. And fácil appears as the only item with a strong salience index within the subgroup social representation. When we see the social representation of learning English as seen from a con contextual perspective, enseñar inglés a los estudiantes del establecimiento donde trabajo es, difícil appears as distinctly strong um, an item for the whole sample, as well as the subgroup, all the subgroups, except for teachers of young learners. This, the second item that could be found in the central kernel, entretenido, is also part of the central kernel for rural school teachers, private school teachers, high school teachers, as well as for teachers with no in-service education and teachers who have more extensive in-service teacher education. Entretenido does not appear as part of the central kernel for the studied social representation 
for any of the remaining subgroups subgroup of teachers who answered the questionnaire. Interestingly, placer appears as the only item with a strong salience index to be considered part of the social representation for teachers of young learners. When the social representation of learning English is seen from the teacher's student's perception, para los estudiantes del establecimiento donde trabajo, aprender inglés es, we notice once again, a distinctly strong presence of the item difícil as part of the central kernel. While for many subgroups of the second, the second item in the, in the social representation seen from this perspective, entretenido, appears to be salient enough. No item could be identified as part of the social representation for teachers of the um, students, um, young learners subgroup. For rural school teachers, Inutil and Lejano are items that also belong to the central corner of their subgroup social representation. While Importante appears as the strongest item for the social representation of the subgroup of teachers who work in private schools. It's also noticeable that for novice teachers subgroup, the central kernel of their social representation is seen from the student's perception presents a different configuration, including items aburrido and inútil. Finally, when the social representation of learning English is seen from the content perspective, lo que enseño cuando hago clases en el, en el establecimiento donde trabajo es, we observe a rather dimly configuration of the social representation where communication appears as the dominant item for the central kernel pattern that is shared by several subgroups. The teachers of young learners subgroup present an unusually strong salience index for communication together with a second item, comunicación, as the configuration of their social representation. Vocabulary, on the other hand, is the only item with a strong salience index to be part of the central kernel for the subgroups of teachers with no in-service teacher education and for the teachers with extensive teaching experience. Once again, the social representation for rural school teachers present a completely different configuration where motivacion appears as the only item to be included in the central kernel for this subgroup. Male teachers, teachers teaching in municip municipal schools, nueva educación pública, high school uh, teachers with a fairly extensive uh, teaching experience do not present any item that could be included in a subgroup social representation. In sum, this figure depicts an overview of findings emerging from the free list online questionnaire answered by the 80 teachers, 80 ESL teachers in my sample. It provides the input to reach an answer to the stated objective to identify the meanings that comprise ESL teachers' social representation of learning English in school contexts. A few interesting insights are, difícil appears as a distinctly strong item in the core kernel of the social representation as seen from three out of five proposed perspectives. My next step is to focus on the unpacking of this meaning to understand in more depth the nature, the complexity, and the implications it contains. Another interesting insight is that items entretenido and placer, which are semantically quite close, appears, appear as a contrasting item to difícil in the central kernel 
of this social representation as seen from the same three perspectives. It also calls my attention that communication is part of the central kernel, but only from the perspective of, con uh, of content. It doesn't permit the discipline, the identity, the context, or the student's perception pers uh, perspective. This is also an area, an area that demands further analysis and understanding. A final interesting site that I want to share with you today for further exploration is the divergence that is evident when the social representation learning English is seen by these teachers from the disciplinary perspective. Undoubtedly, this first encounter with ESL teacher social representations offers an insight into an area of um, teaching and, learn and learning process of ESL in, its, in school context that is as unexplored as potentially relevant to disentangle the complexities uh, underneath the apparent failure of the school system to take students um, to the communication competence standard we have as a national target. I'm looking forward to moving forward in, um, in this project and, and make a contribution to the duty we teachers and teacher educators are so, are so strongly committed to. Thank you very much. <laughs>